Hello, welcome to Sportworks Kingdom Moments. Glad you could join us today. Pray you're having a great Sunday. Pray you somewhere were able to make it to church or look online or be with some folks to worship God together uh, the way God intended. I understand our, our part time, but, but sure excited about the time to get back together. Hoping the same thing happens for my student athlete friends sometime soon that we can get them as teams back together with each other, encouraging one another, challenging one another, and, and just so much. Uh, that I know God has for us. I know He's been teaching us things in between, and uh, but but certainly excited about the thought that that we'll be back at it here before too long, um, not forgetting the things that we've learned. But here we are. We're in John chapter 16. We're we're kind of in the the middle of it. We're gonna have one more section, and then He's gonna jump into His His kind of prayer. And then by the time we hit chapter 18, they're coming to arrest Him, and and boy, it just starts to go quickly from there. Um, but Jesus is trying to get some things across to, to his guys, kind of final words. We've talked before, you kind of remember the final things that those that you love have, have said to you right before they pass. That when you reflect back, you, you may not have understood it at the time, but when you look back, you're like, gosh, I see what he or she was trying to say to me. Uh, those are things I need to take uh, to heart and, and apply to life. And, and for here, he's kind of wants to make sure this group understands He's told him he's going to die. He's told him he'll resurrect. Um, he's told him he's going to ascend, and, and yet they haven't understood that. Uh, they, they haven't grasped it, and I, I can understand why. It's not something you've ever seen before. It's not something we've seen since. Um, but it's what Jesus knows is about to happen, and he wants to get that across and to explain ahead of time so that they'll know that this wasn't just some kind of fluke or what was Jesus and poor Jesus went through. I mean, it was the plan. It was God's understanding. The question is, would you have understood Jesus as he was telling you these things? Again, we, we get to see it already happened looking backwards, but but I'm, there's no way any of us would have understood any more than this group. And, and, and the reality is once God's Spirit comes and he gives great understanding to, to all kind of parts of it. But let, let's jump in here. It's starting in John, again, 16, starting in verse 16. It's a little word play at first, a little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. You're like, okay. <laughs> and so some of his disciples said to one another, what is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. And Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrow, sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. And he's about to give us an analogy I'll read in a second. But he's like, they still don't understand what in a little while means. And so they're not going to see him. And then they are going to see him. And, and, and he's obviously talking about the fact that he's going to be crucified and put in a tomb. And they're not going to see him for a little while. In this case, three days. And then, you know, that they'll begin to see him for 40 days. He appeared to over 500 people to them several different times. Um, that they saw him, and then they all saw him together before he ascended, and he's going to kind of get to that. But the world's going to rejoice at first because they think they've actually done God's bidding by killing Jesus. Uh, and this group, that's his friends and beloved ones, are going to be sorrowful, but when they see him risen, then, then it's kind of going to flip. The, the world's not going to know what to do, and they're going to have a joy that can't be taken away, a joy that will last for all of eternity. I pray you know that joy today. That to know Jesus is to have a joy that nobody can ever do anything to take away. When the Apostle Paul was, was beaten multiple different times and arrested, I mean, he said for me to, in Philippians, he said for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. Uh, you can't really do this thing to somebody that, that has that attitude. Like, so if you're going to beat me, go ahead and beat me. Could you just hurry it up so I can get back to telling people about Jesus? And if you choose to kill me, then that's better yet, because then I go be with Jesus. Uh, the reality is it's always going to be about Jesus. And, and so I have a peace and a joy that the Spirit gives that can't be taken away. Um, and so he's going to give us this analogy. He's trying to help them understand. For any of you young men, that this may not have, 
This analogy may not help. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. She's about to go through horrific pain and, and, and agony through all of this. It says, but when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish. And, and, and to see uh, my wife holding both of my kids after going through all of that, that, that's an incredible description. For joy that a human being has been born in the world. So also have sorrow now, but so also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Words, imagine having watched him die and then, then raised again in his resurrected form. It's, I, I, I think I'd be a little dumbfounded to know what to ask, but he's just like, you haven't asked anything from me, but... He's about to, to give them something else. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will, re- you will receive that your joy may be full. I know verse 24 was one of the earlier verses I was given to memorize when I began to walk with Jesus. So I'm going to read it again. Until now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. The reality is that the Jesus has told them that these are the things I'm going to do and then I'm going to leave. And it's better for you that I go because I'm going to send my spirit. And, and when he does, he's sitting right at the right hand of the Father on our behalf. He did all that. He was put to death in the body and made alive by the Spirit in order to bring us to God. He bridges the gap so we can have a relationship with God that's just like the relationship he has with the Father. So, so through him, we can ask for anything now now here's the reality we, we can kind of misconstrue that verse and go well all right jesus give me a million dollars <laughs> all right jesus give me that major league baseball ability and contract all right jesus right we, we can kind of go on and on but the reality is imagine having watched him live walk with you die raise again be in front of you Watch him ascend, zoom right up into heaven, know that he's there on your behalf. His spirit's now in you. What do you think is going to begin to be on your heart to ask for? How how do you think it's going to change how you view things and see things so that you will begin to ask, much like Jesus said, "I, I, I came to do the will of my Father. And the things that we will begin to pray will be things that will be about bringing the kingdom of God, of of being involved in people's lives and seeing them surrender their lives and receive Christ and grow in him. Again, we we lose a little bit of that when we get away from one another within the church. And I'll confess the church isn't always like it should be. I can assure you that, that when you're in a team setting and folks are there and you're all working that hard for something bigger than yourself, Several weeks, uh, several days ago, we looked at this talk on on the vine. That Jesus is the program. There's nothing bigger than the program. There's nothing bigger than Jesus. And when I truly know what He's forgiven me of, the grace and mercy I've been given, and the love that's in my heart, I want that for everybody that I come in contact with. And for those that I know have that, I want to see that grow, and I want to see it flourish, and I want to see them do their best. When I ask athletes, who pushes you the hardest, coaches or your teammates? But while coaches push and instruct, it's their teammates that, that push them the most. And the reality is I pray that for the body of Christ that we would be like that, that, that we would know that we're together for a purpose bigger than ourselves, and it's to push and to draw and encourage. And Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, Let's consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds spurring one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, some are in the habit of doing, but all the more let us encourage one another, and all the more as we see the day approaching, that, 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 that we just can't get enough of wanting to spur each other and encourage each other and challenge each other. And I pray that, that, that you're in a group like that. If you're not, I pray that you would begin to pray and ask God to show you where there's some people to begin to, to run this race of pursuing Jesus with you. And I pray that there, there's enough stuff out there, enough people, but you don't just need to hear it from someone like me or some other bigger name person, but, but that you need to be walking this with people that spur you on and that you do the same. Because when you start to be in that and they're doing it for you and you can't wait to do it for others, there's nothing like that. And that's the, the goal and the life that Jesus would have for us. He told us we're going to face the difficulties. It's, it's going to be hard. So we're going to need each other. 
And we need each other now, culturally in every way, with all that's going on from, from a virus to racism that ne never wants to go away to things that truly need to change. They need to change within our churches. We, we need to be a group that, that gosh, if, if every, every tribe, tongue, nation is going to come together one day and, and, and going to be in heaven. That, that, that's God's intent. <laughs> um, we're very different. We need one another and we need all the different things that we bring to each other. But let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and love you. We thank you for one another. Thank you for this day that, that we've set aside to start a week that is, is the Lord's day to come and worship. I pray for, for each of us that, that just because we may have been in a service that that doesn't end, that we can't wait to spend more time praising your name, being thankful for all that you've done, and, and spending time just lifting up our brothers and sisters. But again, we, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for the fact that, that you planned long before you came as a man to, to come and to lay your life down and to take it back up again, that we might have your righteousness, be completely forgiven, washed white as snow. And I pray that we would know that today too, that we sit in a joy and a peace and, and a setting that is one that we could have never imagined, that we are completely made new, seen by you, Father, as Jesus is seen. And we thank you for that and, and pray we live in that now the rest of this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all so much. You all have a great night.